Hello everyone, welcome to another Nix Hacker Short. Today we're going to be talking about the prompt buffer, or as you may know it, the Omnibar. So the Omnibar is omnipresent in every browser these days. It's the URL bar where you type in things and all sorts of magic happens. And you might be tempted after this video to believe that the prompt buffer is a gift from Prometheus himself. I cannot confirm or deny this, but I can tell you that Aristotle once said, the path to true knowledge lies in mastering the prompt buffer. For in seamless navigation of the digital realm, one unlocks the gateway to a world of boundless wisdom and understanding. That said, let's begin. So a simple example is, of course, setting the URL. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. We're either going to click on this bar here or press Control L, however we like to do it. And let's type in a query. So um, we're going to be looking at fish. And as you can see, uh, as you might expect, there's a bunch of results here from uh, the internet. So uh, fishing rod or fishing boat, these are suggestions from a search engine. And this is in what we call a source. So you see this table here represents a single source. And multiple sources represent a complete query. So uh, you look here, if I press that down arrow, we are now in our global history, another source. And so it's going to look at the global history and return a set of results. If I click down again, it's going to look through my bookmarks and return a set of results. Again, all of these suggestions allow you to narrow things down and say, OK, I'm looking for fish from my history or fish from my bookmarks or whatever. And that's pretty great. And um, it works. But what if you've got a lot of results? So here we've got just 12 results for fish and you could feasibly go through them manually. But what if you had, I don't know, maybe 200 results in your history for fish? You could do a couple of approaches. The first and most obvious one is to add more detail to your query. So if we typed in fish etymology, and then we go back down to our source here for our history, we're going to see that it's more specific, right? It returns just one result because one result matches fish etymology uh, specifically. However, there are other ways. You'll notice that each source has a couple of columns. These are attributes or properties of a given result. So we've got the URL, the title, and the number of visits for a history entry. For our bookmark, we've got again the URL, the title, and the tags. What if I told you that you can dynamically adjust which columns or attributes you are searching against? Well, obviously you can. So you can press this plus minus key on the right of each individual source. And then you'll be presented with another list where you can check and uncheck different attributes. So let's go ahead and add the date. OK, and then let's press return. And now our bookmarks features another column, the date. So using this, we can do something pretty, uh, pretty cool. I think let's say we want to search and show all of our entries from Wikipedia that we bookmarked in November. We're simply going to type in wiki and nov because November. And now we have all of our Wikipedia entries from November. I think that's pretty damn cool. So we've crafted a query and we've selected a couple of things or one thing or whatever. Now, how do we tell next what to act upon? Well, as you saw before, we can use the checkboxes or we can use a number of hotkeys. For example, we can use Alt A to select all of the results within a given source or Alt U to unselect them. And as we're selecting them, I want you to notice that here it now says four, four of 15. So we've selected four of 15 from the total uh, set of results. And if we go ahead and edit our query, you'll see that four things are still selected. This lets us do operations with or and and. So we selected all of the things from Wikipedia from November. What if though we want to unselect um, things related to uh, chimpanzees for whatever reason. So I could type in chimp. I believe there, yeah, there was one about chimps. And now let's say there were multiple about chimps. I could unselect them all. And now I've filtered on Wikipedia entries that I bookmarked in November that are not about chimps or chimpanzees. 
And then when I'm finally ready and I've got my, you know, three, again, three selections, they're still here. They're not gone, even though we can't see them. I can do an action upon them. Um, you can do any number of actions and to figure out which actions are possible, you're going to press alt return instead of just regular return. So I'm going to press alt return and I have a couple of things here. I can either, you know, load this in an individual buffer, which doesn't necessarily make much sense to load one URL in one buffer, uh, multiple URLs in one buffer, or I can load these in new buffers. So I can select new buffer load. And now those uh, entries that I had selected are going to appear in new buffers. So just like that, uh, notice gorillas are not chimpanzees. Um, we've got our three things that we, um, actually, I don't know if bonobos are chimpanzees. No, I don't think so. Oh, they are. Okay. I, I guess they could be considered chimpanzees. I hadn't properly tagged them as chimpanzees for the purpose of this demo. <laughs> so you'll have to forgive me for that. Um, but now we've opened all of our Wikipedia entries from November that are not about chimpanzees. So that's pretty cool. Um, these actions are customizable per source and per um, thing that we're doing. So even though we um, were in a sort of set URL uh, prompt, right? We press the URL button and it brings us up to open URL or control L as we had done. Uh, we can do arbitrary actions at that point in time. So speaking of actions, there's actually an action beyond what happens when you simply press um, return or alt return. And these are called follow actions. And a great example of them is in our switch buffer command or switch tab command. So if I press control XB in my hotkeys, uh, it'll allow me to switch buffers. And as I go through these buffers, it will do this action where it will sort of preview them for me. This is called a follow action. And actually I can toggle it by using control C, control F to toggle the sort of suggestion action or follow action. And now when I go through them, it's not gonna uh, do anything for me. But if I were to press control C and control J, I would see the follow actions uh, available to me. In this case, there's only one really relevant one, but it could be other things too. It could be something like um, reload buffer. And sort of as I paginate through the buffers, it would automatically reload them. And um, as you can see, it's quite versatile. It's, it's really hard to explain uh, all of the possibilities without utilizing it. So I suggest you really play around with the uh, queries of the prompt for a little bit uh, yourself to get a feeling for it. Anyways, um, after all of this, you might be surprised to find out there actually is a life outside of the prompt buffer. And sometimes we must step outside of our uh, ivory tower and look upon the world. Uh, this is of course tragic, but to do this, we can simply press X or escape or, or whatever, and we'll close the prompt. But what if we close the prompt and we actually just want to get back to it? Well, there's a command for that. And that command is called resume prompt. So if I type in resume prompt or metaspace, it'll show me all of my previous prompts that I had typed and it'll allow me to resume them. So previously I had typed open URL and I had typed in uh, leopard. So if I select that one, it'll bring it up again and it'll put me exactly where I was. So I can go back to the, the rest of the, uh, the browser and then resume prompts as necessary. <laughs> I can also do some other actions. Uh, you see that this uh, sort of this suggestion interface here takes up some space and we can go ahead and minimize that by pressing um, shift up, alt shift up. So we can kind of increase our viewing area if we are doing something like uh, link hints, you know, where we don't want uh, everything to be in our way, right? Also, we can toggle uh, the interface and focus on the um, main buffer instead of the prompt buffer using meta O. That also allows us to then scroll the, uh, the main buffer and then go back to the prompt buffer. We have these little functions that allow us to easily jump in and out of our buffer. So before I go, I'd like to leave you with one final morsel of wisdom. Uh, this is courtesy of uh, uh, an LLM, of course, and it tells you that Give a man a taco and he'll have a snack. 
teach a man to salsa dance with tacos, and he'll have a fiesta for life. So next time you're in the prompt buffer, press F1M for a useful list of shortcuts. <laughs> so check it out. F1M. And now you don't have to remember all the stuff I just said. You can just look it up, play around with the prompt buffer, and enjoy. So um, thanks for watching, and may you forever dance with the tacos. Good luck.